I'm so glad to finally be here in Royal Tunbridge Wells. The name of your town has been in my diary for the last four months. During these four months, I have been in Paris, Rotterdam, Mexico, Porto, Shanghai, a couple of times in London, three times in Amsterdam. In the next four, I plan to be in Madrid, London, Shanghai again, Mexico, Peru, Florida, New York, and a couple of times in Amsterdam as well. For those of you who love traveling, you might be thinking, wow, how nice. It must be fantastic to travel so much. But what if I tell you that all these trips are purely for business? In other words, there are no sunny pictures of Cancun. There are no nice pictures of the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. On the contrary, there are long waiting hours in airports, lack of sleep, some food surprises, many, many phone calls home reminding my three kids that they still have a loving and caring father. And it can be worse. Some, someday you can find your own wife asking you, why did you always choose a job that makes you travel so much? And this is scary. So where is the joy? Or how I discovered the joy of traveling for business? What I do when I travel for business, I bring with me the curious void that is still in me. That void that makes me play with history, with geography, with politics, wrap all together with imagination and create my own stories. Stories that, for instance, make me cross London's Victoria Station looking for secret agents around. Uh, I joke about this weirdest room I've ever been in Amsterdam. What you see there, the tube, is a shower in the middle of the room. I can tell you that I couldn't sleep just thinking that any alien would just come down from the shower. <laughs> I love conferences. I learned so much from them. This one in Paris, my colleague John Poulston had such a good uh, speech on the Brexit referendum. And he was so accurate, by the way. So in Paris, I learned from, from you, British people. When I'm alone, I take long walks at night through the city. For instance, in London, I really love and feel magnetized by St. Paul's Cathedral. In Latin America, I discovered the magic realism of Latin America through the sculptures and paintings of Botero, thanks to my friend Angel, who lives in Colombia for the last five years. In Tokyo, for instance, after six days of meetings, I realized and understand the deep sense of the movie Lost in Translation, listening to a fine banjo, jazz band while drinking the Lost in Translation cocktail at the Hyatt Tokyo Hotel. Singapore. Singapore may be the place where I've dedicated more efforts to understand the tricks of its success. I recall this such, such interesting meeting with this uh, client, an Indonesian uh, Chinese origin, uh, from Chinese origins. So after the meeting, I just told him, look, I've been always interested in understanding the role that the Chinese people have played in the Southeast Asia, because I had read some things before. So he was so delighted that after one, one hour, I had just got the best lesson I could get about this subject. I also travel in time. I can travel in time as well. Let's move to Romania. Let's move to Timisoara. After the whole day of meetings, I just passed by this such beautiful cathedral, Orthodox cathedral. I listened to these people singing inside. I got in, and I see the first, for the first time in my life, the liturgy and the ceremony of an Orthodox uh, liturgy. So I just stood there in silence, and my mind just traveling in time, I could imagine how impressive, how powerful this liturgy had to be for uneducated people in previous ages. So, which are the main factors of these stories and many others that I could explain to you? From my perspective, the first one is people, second one, introspection, and the third one, language. People, a true willingness to understand and connect with people. Apart from setting my business meetings, what I do when I travel to a city for some days, I look in my LinkedIn account and search for people that I could get in touch with. Not people strictly from my own industry, just a broad search. And I organize sort of blind dates. So a dinner, a lunch, a meeting, whatever. And I try to understand what this person is doing in that in that country, in that city, how is life there, how is the profession there, how is business. And when you get this connection, when you feel this connection, 
you know that something has changed in the other and in you. Introspection. I take the opportunity of any of the infinite moments of solitude that you have when you travel, such as commuting in the airport, having dinner alone, and reflect on what I just have learned, I connect the dots, or even write down my conclusions on Instagram, on Facebook. And one of the joys is after some time of having written them, get back and read them again, and discover that you are constructing something, that you're constructing some kind of uh, knowledge. And language. Once, Nelson Mandela said that if you talk to a man in the language he understands, that, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. I believe that true communication is the one that goes from heart to heart. Whenever I travel to a country that I don't know the language, what I do is I try to learn the basic things, the basic words. Hello, how are you? Thank you, bye-bye. This makes such a difference. It makes a difference here in UK. It makes a difference in Indonesia, in Japan, in Germany, in Netherlands, even in France, especially in France, by the way. <laughs> My English friends, you have the best advantage I could ever think of. You own the language that the 95% of the rest of the world's population need to learn in order to make ourselves understood. This is so powerful. You have the ability to reach our heads. But my question is, do you really strive enough to reach our hearts? And reaching your heart is my aim of being today here with you. As I was telling you, I've had for four months your, the name of your time in my diary. I just spent 20 hours, so just 20 hours in your time, your town. But I can tell you, every single English person that has come across during these four months has received the same question from me. Tell me things about Royal Cambridge Wells. I've also asked and searched on the web, social media, so I've learned some things. I know, I know for instance, that water and bonash put you once on the map. I also know the importance of the attribute royal for you as a, as a town. I've been seriously advised, seri better said, seriously warned of not confusing Tombridge with Tombridge. And the best discovery I had is the disgust of Tambridge Wells. You know I like history, so finding this essence of the Victorian spirit in the persona of this educated gentleman that is capable of complaining about the cock crowning at dawn. In, in, 20, in 1915, the year your town had been bombed by the German Zeppelins. This is fantastic. On top of that, I had some interviews and some conversations with some of your neighbors, some of them even friends, like Jonathan or Dan. So I've learned many things about you. I've learned that you are a dynamic society, that you are a very engaging community, that you support your local businesses, and events such as this one shows. So I just came here after reading so much and talking to so many people, and I was expecting the royal, the disgusted of Tarnham Rich Wells. And what did I find? was the enthusiastic of Tunbridge Wells, which is you. And this is a discovery I will take back home. Thank you. <laughs>